Being such a satellite and antenna enthusiast, it only makes sense that once in a while I have to prepare my own coaxial cable. So I thought I'd make a video showing you how I cut, strip, and crimp my own cable ends on. Some people ask, why would I want to make my own TV cables? Well, first of all, it's probably a lot more economical to make your own up than to buy them by the length at a store. Uh, if you've ever checked out the price of a 25 or 50 foot roll with connectors uh, installed, they can get really expensive. And uh, the second thing is you can make your own custom cable lengths. If you buy one from the store and it's an extra 10 or 20 feet long, then what are you going to do with all that extra cable? And finally, I just think it's kind of fun. Plus, you get to buy lots of cool tools. And when it comes to cutting coax cable, a lot of people might just grab a pair of pliers, but I have a special pair of cutters made specifically for cutting coax. You can see the blades are rounded. And uh, what I like to do is square it up to the coax first, and then when you cut it, it keeps the, keeps the cable a little more round as opposed to squishing it flat. Correctly stripping a piece of coax cable involves two cuts. The first one is to expose this center conductor that actually carries the TV signal. And the second is to expose this braided shielding here, which covers this plastic insulator. And they have tools that are specially made for stripping coax cable. Here's one right here. And uh, these are much safer than using a knife and probably more effective. They're not very expensive. You can adjust them for different types of coax cable. Right now, I've got it set here for RG6. You can see the little six there. There's two blades here that cut the inner and outer um, insulation and get the cable prepared for the proper type of connector they put on the end. And normally these tools come with an Allen wrench to adjust the blades to get the proper cutting depth. To strip the cable, open the jaws of the tool and place the coax in this little crook right here and then just close it. And the blades will engage and now you just have to slightly squeeze it. Put your finger in the ring and just while you're holding the cable firmly, turn the tool a few times. You don't have to turn it a thousand times. And then open the jaws and release the cable. And you can see we've got two cuts made here. The first one exposes the inner conductor core. The second one exposes the braided shielding and the plastic insulation. Now that we've got the cable properly stripped, we're going to go ahead and add a crimp connector to it. This is the first type of connector I'll show you. Basically, this gets pushed onto the cable and then squeezed in place. And these tools here are the kind of tool you need to do that job, but some of these are better than others. This one here is probably the cheapest one and definitely the worst. I would not recommend this. It doesn't do a great job of squeezing the terminal on. It leaves it a bit misshapen and loose. So don't buy these. These ones here are pretty good. They uh, shape the connector nicely do a pretty good job crimping it on same with these these ones are my favorite though these are a ratcheting style crimper and you can actually hear the ratcheting action they provide lots of crimping power so we're going to use these today now the very first step and probably the single most important thing you can do when you're going to add the terminal to your cable is this braided shielding has to be peeled back Okay, now if you look at it closely, there's the shielding, and then there is this foil. The foil can stay, but it's very important to get all of this braided shielding peeled back. Just roll it back over the uh, outer black jacket, just like that. And be very certain that there are no pieces of this braided shielding touching the center conductor. 
And I'm a little bit particular about this. Sometimes I take a little longer to uh, make a connection, but it's worth it because if any part of this braided shielding touches, you might have a short, and that can either affect your signal or cause no signal at all. Okay, so now that that's pushed back pretty secure, make sure there's no odd, odd threads anywhere near that. That looks pretty clean. So now we just take the connector and we're gonna just push the connector right through that middle hole. And you have to use a little bit of force to get that on there. Now there are tools to do that with, but I just usually do it by hand. Now, I've actually pushed this on a little too far and that's okay, we're gonna back it off a bit. Basically, you want that white insulation to be flush with the inside bottom pan of the, of the terminal. It's gonna move that up a little bit more. Yeah, try to get it as flush as possible. That looks pretty good. Okay, and that looks nice from the outside too. So now we'll go ahead and put this in the tool and crimp. Now, this is an RG6 connection, so we're gonna use the middle, the middle teeth. I'm gonna set this just so this is flush. You don't want it too far up because it'll bother this threaded ring here. And just get that set in the jaws. And then squeeze. Now when I take it out, you'll see it's actually going to be hexagonal shaped, just like the tool die. Release the jaws. And there you go. Okay, nice hexagonal shape. Give it a pull. That's not going to come off now. And this part still rolls freely so you can thread that onto your F connector in your uh, TV or cable box. So that's a crimp connection. These are good for mostly indoor. I have used them outside with little problems but I think long term you probably want to use these um, indoors. Now the next connection I'm going to show you is a compression connection. That's what you want to use outdoors. So let's get to that. Okay, now we're ready to make a compression connection. I've prepared another piece of cable. Just for comparison's sake, this is the crimp connector we just put on. This is the compression connector. So the compression connector is a little larger. It's definitely a little more rugged, well, a lot more rugged. And it's much more suitable for outdoors. When this gets compressed onto the cable, it makes a much tighter fit. So it's better for keeping water and weather out. That's why it's more suitable for outdoors. So let's make that now. Okay, so once again, as always, the first step is to roll back this braided shielding. And I really feel that it's best if you just take, time, take the time and double check this step. You can actually see there's a little piece that's touching. So that's not gonna be good, we have to get that off there. It's really worth taking the time to do this carefully because ultimately you're gonna have a piece of cabling that's mo way more reliable and it'll, it'll last longer too. Okay. There we go, that's better. Okay. So now we just take the compression connection and just slide the cable inside of it. And again, we're gonna press it on with our hands and it's almost there. I'm just gonna press it on a little more. Again, we want to make sure that the white insulator is flush with the bottom pan of the connector, okay? There we 
go. That's good. All right, now we can go ahead and put that in the compression tool. And the way we do this is we actually just rest it in right in this little spot here. Rest the center conductor in there and then just press the cable down and just squeeze and you'll watch, you'll see the, the uh, terminal get compressed. All right, there we go. And that is on there. It's not coming off. One little fiddly detail that everyone seems to have their own opinion about is how long are you supposed to leave the center conductor sticking out of the connector? Well, I definitely think you don't want to have it sitting below the rim because if it's too short, then you're not going to get a good secure contact when you connect this to your TV or receiver. One trick I like to do is just to put the needle nose pliers on the conductor like this and just rest it on top of the connector and just cut it like that. Then you still got a little bit of length sticking out and um, that's probably a good length. That's certainly not too long to interfere with uh, proper installation. All right, so that was a video on preparing your own coaxial cable. Um, this is a crimp connector. This is a compression connector. And it's kind of satisfying to make your own cables up. Thanks for watching.